Two weeks ago, President Amajin of Iran was at the UN and also a guest of the University of uh, Columbia in New York City. And after his, uh, his appearances, uh, he had a press release and uh, some journalists stood up and asked him point blank, the question that was probably on everyone's mind is what about the rights of women and gay people in Iran? Aren't they being trampled on? And Ahmadine, uh, usually, before that he was looking to his advisor before he asked all the questions, but he immediately jumped on that question and completely ignored the question about women and said, point blank, there are no gay people in Iran. And the entire room erupted in, in, in riotous laughter because of course that was a completely ludicrous uh, statement. There are gay people everywhere. There are two worlds now in the gay world, or so it seemed, that a lot of us are we're gaining rights, we're gaining acceptance. On the other hand, we're almost being threatened with the becoming invisible or disappearing from the face of the earth in some places, just like that. It's like a, a denial of our very existence. And so I think it, uh, it behooves us, each one of us, to stand up for ourselves and be counted. And I have to even include myself in that. And I want to tell you a story about something that happened to me last night that I've, made me, I've been thinking about all day. Uh, last night, we're right here, we're on the island of Oahu and Waikiki Beach. And last night, we went to the luau at the Royal Hawaiian. And I was there with Tom. Uh, and I was also there with my lover, husband, partner, Ramo. And we've been married for, uh, uh, since 2001. And this trip is sort of our honeymoon uh, that we never got to take. And we're sort of catching up now. And at one point during the festivities of this luau, they asked us, they, the MC invited all the couples who are married, just married, or celebrating an anniversary, or on their honeymoon, to get up and dance. And, uh, and it jumped in my mind to grab my partner Ramo's hand and get up and dance with all the rest of them, and I didn't. I didn't stand up, and I didn't show up, and it bothers me that I didn't do that because I wasn't walking my own talk. Um, and it took a lot, it would have taken a lot of courage to do that. We're in Hawaii, which is a very conservative stronghold. Um, as we've been here, we've noticed that they're slowly but surely even erasing any gay presence that ever was here. Uh, but I, even myself, I didn't stand up and I didn't dance and celebrate myself and I didn't celebrate the existence of my relationship and put myself on an evil footing with other people. And uh, I can't go back and repeat that now. It's done, what's done is done. And uh, I'm not gonna beat myself up about it either because uh, it just made me think, if we don't stand up individually in our own lives, even for a little thing like a, a little luau, um, well then the people like Amogene and Bush are just gonna even deny that we even exist. I mean, they would love to do that, wouldn't they? They would like to say, well, there are no gay people. We just don't exist. And so it's time for us all to stand up and be counted in each of our little ways, whether it's at a luau or whether it's in our neighborhood or it's at work or in our churches and schools uh, or on our job. It's important, even though we think we're gaining equality, to still say, be role models and to stand up and say, I'm proud of who I am. And then maybe it's not just because we're gay. I mean, that's not the whole thing that we are, but it is a part of us, and it is a part of us that is used against us, to discriminate against us often, and persecute us, or even in Iran, to hang us. Or, or in America, to say, it's okay for you to go to war and kill other people, but don't be gay. You'll be kicked out. You won't even have the privilege to do that. And so stand up and be accounted. Don't be afraid. And God bless. I was sitting beside you and Ramo at the Luau when they invited people to stand up and dance with their partners. And I was also experiencing that same, like, are you going to stand up? Are, you know, would it cause more trouble to stand up or not stand up? And then I realized that just as in so many, just as in so many parts of history and so many parts of, of the world, 
it's it there really is a dictatorship of the super powerful over over anybody that's in a minority group and and there comes a time when you have to be willing to like am i willing to risk causing um as thomas paine said uh, at one point if you want to have a, a good harvest you might have to have a heavy rainstorm and some thunder and lightning you might be willing to cause some hubbub or commotion and at that moment I think out of love you decided it would be much nicer for the entire luau if no commotion was was uh, was created by your standing up and it probably would have because it was a very conservative group but at the same time I agree with what you're saying as long as we're afraid as long as we're afraid of the invisible sledgehammer and let's wake up there's a sledgehammer over our head and the sledgehammer invisible as it is is real and it says if you the Japanese have a saying the tallest nail is the one that get, gets hit first and if we do begin to stand up we risk our lives we risk our positions like Martin Luther King Bobby Kennedy JFK Malcolm X we literally risk our safety and so there comes that moment where you say to yourself, am I willing to risk it all just to make a statement that I am equal? The next level, however, is the fact that when we wake up, we realize that we're all equal. And the fact that we even allow people to control and govern us like the president of Iran or President Bush, quote, President Bush, unquote, is, it, it's a measure of our, of our unenlightenment because the whole way the system is set up of having powerful people over lesser powerful people is, is a crock. We're all gods in the making. We are all extensions of one source energy. We're all extensions of one God being who I believe is attempting to wake up in the dream, wake up in this beautiful artistic dream and realize that we're God, you're God, I'm God, everybody's God. Nobody has any superior or inferior rank because we're all like one finger, this finger, this. we're all coming out of the same hand. Like we're all palm fronds out of one, out of one trunk. It's what Jesus said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. So maybe the next step in our evolution, maybe the next step of the revolution and I've often said this to you, Michael, let's wake up. You know, maybe the next step is just waking up and realizing that we're all gods in the making. When you realize that, it's like all of a sudden, wow, nobody can overwhelm us. No, nothing can make us afraid because we're eternal, we're immortal God beings, and our destiny is to wake up to that. In fact, it's our calling, it's our obligation, and it's the next step in cosmic evolution.